Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. Now recently I've done a few videos all about design handoff and as I'm sure you know, handing off your designs to developers can be pretty painful. There's been a lot of different tools that have tried to solve this part of the design to develop a handoff and workflow, but none has done it quite so well as Anima. Now Anima just released their brand new version of the two, Anima 4.0, and I've been beta testing it and trying it out over the last few weeks, and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed by what I'm seeing. And I wanna show you a little bit about the new features and how the tool works today. What's exciting about the new version of Anima is that they're bringing developers and engineers into the fold and turning high fidelity prototypes into actual real working code that developers can use and push live into their development environment. Now, if you're not familiar with Anima, Anima is a design to development platform that works with any design tool. So whether you're using Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, don't worry, Anima will work for you. Unlike existing handoff solutions that only give you Redline or CSS, Anima actually transforms designs into working developer ready React code, which is pretty cool. Not only will you have responsive, interactive, animated, high fidelity code based prototypes, but you'll also have full web functionality as well. So anything like web forms or GIFs or animations will also be supported. Look, let's be honest, transforming designs into developer friendly, ready to go to production code is pretty difficult, but I'm super impressed with what Anima has been doing and think that this could actually be a game changing tool for handoff. All right, I'm gonna show you the tool and how it works, but before I do, just to mention, this is a sponsored video by Anima, but you all know by now that I only do sponsored videos of tools that I actually like, enjoy, and am really excited about. So with that said, let's jump on into Anima. So first of all, let me show you what we're gonna make today. So I have this website that has been designed in Figma. And if I refresh this now, you'll notice that, you know, some of the text animates in as I scroll, this sort of sidebar stays fixed. And so this is actually a fully interacting website. So I'm gonna show you how Anima did this from Figma. So to get started, here is the website design that I have in Figma. And you'll notice that I have four breakpoints here. That's because we want this to be a responsive website. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the Anima plugin for Figma. To find the plugin, just create your Anima account, go over to plugins, and then here you can find the plugins for your design tool of choice. So if we look at the plugin here, we basically have three sections. We have the flow section, smart layers, and layout. Basically, I can use this Anima plugin to sort of configure how I want the website to interact. Maybe I wanna add hover states or animations or text input fields. I'm gonna set all of that up using this plugin. Once I've configured all of that, I'm gonna preview it in the browser and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. That's where you're gonna get the developer ready friendly code. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure that this website is responsive. So I have the breakpoints here and I wanna make sure that when you're viewing it on your mobile, you're gonna get this version of the design. So to do that in the Anima plugin, I'm going to click on breakpoints and it's gonna ask me to select the frames that I want to connect. So I'm gonna hold shift and select all of these frames here. So they are all selected and then I'm gonna click on done. And that's it, amazingly easy. So let's see, if I now click on preview in browser, it's gonna push that to the Anima platform in the web, and then we can see what this responsive design looks like. All right, our draft is ready, let's have a look. So now I'm previewing it within the Anima platform, and you can see I can switch here between different breakpoints. So I can view my desktop version, tablet, and then also mobile. And if I click on responsive, I can actually, you know, go in between the different breakpoints and see at what point the design flexes to the different breakpoints that we set. Now, next, let's add some animation because that's always super fun. So you can add animation to any element by just selecting the element and then configuring it in the plugin. So let's say I wanted to make this title here animate up when I kind of arrive and scroll on the website. So to do that, I'm going to select these text elements here and then in the plugin, I'm going to click on entrance animation. And you'll see here that there is some pre-configured different kind of effects or animation effects that we can choose from. I can also choose the curve of the animation, set a delay, duration, and then I can check if I want it to begin as we scroll into the screen. So I'm going to select move up and then I'm going to choose my curve ease in out. I don't think I'm gonna give this a delay, but I might 
increase the duration to 0.8 seconds and then begin on scroll into screen. Then make sure you click on save to save that animation. And I'm gonna click again on preview in browser to sync it back to the Anima platform. And let's see what that animation looks like. Okay, our draft is ready. Let's open it in Anima. And do you see that? Let's see if I refresh again, notice that this text kind of animates in by moving up, which is really awesome. I can't believe I could just do that from Figma and it kind of works immediately on the web. All right, let me show you how I did some of the other things like the fixed menu and some of the text input. So for text input, I'm going to select this text here, which is where I want the user of this website to be able to input their own text. And in the plugin, I'm gonna click on text input. And then, you know, if you wanted to, you could choose this to be different kinds of input. For this, I'm just gonna do text and then placeholder is already the text that we have there. And if you like, you can make this a required field, but I'm not gonna do that for the context of this one. To make the fixed side menu is super easy. I just click on the sidebar menu and then in the Anima plugin, just check the box for fixed position. And you can add that to anything else on the page that you want to remain fixed. Now, I might also add some other nice little entrance animations, some of the other elements that I have for on the page, maybe setting some delays and things like that. Now there's some other really cool things you can do with this, like you can add support for videos or GIFs or Lottie animations. You can even do things like form input fields where you actually can collect things like email addresses or, or names or passwords. All right, let's preview this in the browser with the updates that we just made. All right, so let's refresh this and Okay, our heading. Oh, also, did you see this animation here? Let me refresh again. So notice that after uh, the delay that I set, which I think was like one second or so, the all upcoming concerts section also kind of animates in as I scroll, which is super lovely. And we have this text input here and this fixed sidebar. Okay, so that's how you use Anima in your design tool to kind of set up and configure how you want the site to interact. Now let's look at the Anima platform for a minute. You'll notice in the Anima platform, there's kind of three modes. We have play, comment, and now in 4.0, we also have code. Play is how we kind of interact and preview with the website that we just created. Comment allows you to leave comments on any kind of element or section on the website. Lastly, we have the code section, and this is where Anima will give me developer-friendly code. Now, I can select on any element in this design, and Anima will actually show me the code down below. Now, I can preview this code in HTML or also React, which is really cool that they're supporting React code. Over here on the right-hand side is some overrides, so if the developer wanted to override some of the code, they could do that really, really easily. And there's also an assets panel, which has all of the assets that are being used on this website available to download, which I think is such a neat little feature that would save me so much time. I'm often exporting individually all of the assets used in my designs and putting them into like a Google Drive folder. This means they're all in one place available for the developers to download to use themselves. So your developers can download this code and then use that in their development platform. And it's really developer friendly, but if they wanted to, they could of course override some of the code themselves. So as you can see, Anima is really focused on this continuous developer designer relationship. As I'm making changes in Figma, I can push that up to the Anima platform, let my engineer know, and then they can just jump into Anima and get the latest design and code for that design, which is gonna save so much time and back and forth conversations and Figma links. Last thing to show you in the Anima platform, of course, you can also share this. So if you wanted to collaborate and invite your teammates into this project, you can invite them here, or you can also generate and share a prototype link. Now let's look at how to publish this for a second, because if this was a real sort of website that I wanted to push live, you can do that straight from Anima. So from my project in Anima, I can click on the project settings, go across to public link, and then here I'll be able to add my own custom domain if I wanted to. You can also set other information like site info, maybe you wanna upload your own favicon or like have a mobile app icon, and of course, SEO settings for ranking in Google and analytics, and here's where you would get your form submissions if you were collecting things like email addresses. All right, so that is Anima 4.0, and what I think is really exciting about this tool is that for the first time, developers have access to you know production-ready code and and they can cherry pick the code that they want for individual elements straight from your design. Anima allows you to create code-based prototypes. As you saw, we can do things like 
hover effects, animations, GIFs, form inputs, text inputs, etc, etc. That turns your prototype from just like a static clickable prototype into a fully functioning web based interactive prototype. Going from a design to a high fidelity, interactive, real working prototype, I think is very, very exciting. And I'm looking forward to being able to bring this tool into my own workflow. And finally, the Anima team told me that they are working on support for more coding languages like Vue.js, Angular, and even Swift UI in 2021. So a lot to look forward to with this tool. All right, that's it, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of Anima in the comments below, or maybe you've tried another handoff tool that you're really excited about. Would love to hear that as well. Otherwise, I'll catch you in a future video. Thanks always for watching and for your support. See ya.